$500 off the lead, John. Yes, all right, here comes the clue for you. This Seattle-based coffee chain was named for the first mate in Moby Dick. I never knew my mother. What is Starbucks? Oh. You know nothing, Jon Snow. But don't worry, I can help. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory. You know, if there's one thing I've learned from all my years working on these videos, it's that in the game of theories, you either win or you die at the hands of angry fanboys. But who knows, that was for game theory. Maybe film theory viewers will be more forgiving. Oh, just wait till I talk about Star Wars. Never mind. Shameless promotion of game theory aside, the HBO show Game of Thrones has been an absolutely massive hit because of its stellar storytelling, captivating characters, and, uh, well, other things. Lots and lots of other things. But in all seriousness, with the fifth season currently in progress, this show has been presenting us with unsolved mysteries since episode one. Even the books have left us in the dark. And when getting ready to theorize about this series, there is no better place to start than with the mystery of Jon Snow's mother. This detail is so important to Game of Thrones that when approached to adapt his books to TV, George R. R. Martin, the book's author, ended the interview asking for her true identity. Now, can we just take a minute to appreciate the mental image of George R.R. acting like the bridge keeper from Monty Python? What is your name? Dan Weiss. What is your quest? Adapt your books to television. What is the identity of Jon Snow's mother? Apparently these guys were able to answer correctly, and if they can figure it out, so can we. Now, before we continue, a warning. We're gonna be treading beyond the wall into spoiler territory. If you're up to date with the show, then you'll be fine. If not, well, beware ye who enter. Here there be dragons. And minor spoilers and speculation. For almost the first time, I get to talk about a work of fiction that's actually in progress. So this is pretty cool. Watch the show, then watch this theory, then watch the rest of the show, then go back and watch this theory again to see if I was right. And you could know it here first. All right, let's start with what we know. Jon Snow is the bastard son of, am I allowed to say bastard? Isn't that like a bad word or something? Well, <laughs> watch out, film theory getting all PG-13 up in here. Jon Snow is the born-out-of-wedlock son of Eddard Stark, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. The story we know is that Jon was born after a single night of passion about 20 years ago, and has been raised by Lord Stark in Winterfell ever since. We hear repeatedly from various characters throughout the series that Jon's personality resembles that of a Stark far more than any of Ned's other true-born children, except for maybe Arya. So, who are our suspects? Ned himself tells us the mother's name is a woman named Wyla. Well, he doesn't tell us. It's not like he went all meta and broke the fourth wall or anything. No, he says it to his close friend, Robert Baratheon, king of Westeros, during the second episode of the series. The story goes that she was a wet nurse who somehow managed to charm Eddard into her bed while he was away from home fighting alongside Robert. One thing leads to another, and nine months later, out pops the baby. And Ned, being a man of true honor, takes responsibility for the child, bringing him home to Winterfell. Boom! Done! Open and shut case, cut and roll credits. Man, these film theory episodes are easy. Okay, so obviously it's not as clear cut as that. Eddard Stark is, well, was a pillar of virtue. I don't care how much junk Wyla was carrying in her trunk, Ned was the type of man who always stayed true to his vows, to what was just. This is a guy who would trade his head for his honor, literally. In season one, we see him willing to die of starvation in a prison cell because he won't lie about who the next king of the realm rightfully is. Eddard just isn't the type of guy who would dishonor his wife like that, and pulling a page from Reading Rainbow, you don't have to take my word for it. King Robert's brother Stannis backs me up here in season 5, stating that betting a tavern whore wasn't Ned Stark's way. And look at what Ned does when Robert presses him to talk about Wyla. He nearly shuts down, with agony clearly in his eyes, refusing to speak anything but her name. This is a man who wouldn't have been able to cheat on his wife even if he wanted to. Clearly, he's lying. You see, loyal theorists, Jon Snow's mother isn't some naughty nurse or random tavern wench, but instead 
Ned's deceased sister, Lyanna Stark. Whoa, whoa, when I put it that way, it makes it sound way worse. Get your minds out of the gutter, this isn't a Cersei Jamie situation. Stop typing your rage comments, Ned isn't an incestuous necrophiliac. No, my theory is that Ned isn't John's parent at all, that John's mother is Lyanna Stark, and that the father is actually Rhaegar Targaryen. Now, if you've never seen the show, you're probably asking, who's that? And if you have seen the show, you're probably still asking, who's that? Because seriously, who is that? There are so many darn characters in the show whose names are impossible to remember. Seriously, Roos Bolton? I mean, who took any notice of that guy before the end of season three, am I right? Okay, so who is Rhaegar, outside of being the guy whose name is literally impossible to type correctly? Well, he's probably the most important character we'll never meet on the show, considering he's dead. But we do know a lot about him already. He was Daenerys Targaryen's oldest brother and heir to the throne of Westeros. We also hear in bits and pieces throughout season one that he kidnapped and raped Lyanna, and that Robert, who was engaged to her, started a war called Robert's Rebellion to bring her back. At the end of the rebellion, he ends up killing Rhaegar, but when they try to rescue Lyanna, she's already dying, lying in a bed of her own blood. But beyond Lyanna, Rhaegar's death actually had huge repercussions, resulting in the Targaryen family being ousted from the throne, Daenerys and her brother having to flee the realm, and Robert Baratheon becoming king. So a pretty big deal for a guy that we've never met. So what makes me say that we've been lied to and that Jon Snow's parents are two characters that are already dead and that we'll never meet? Let me explain. Although there have been hints here and there, last week's episode actually gives us the strongest clue we've yet seen on the show confirming this theory. There's a crucial scene that takes place in the crypts below Winterfell between Ned's eldest daughter Sansa and the sleaziest guy in the kingdom of Westeros, Lord Baelish. While they walk through the Hall of Fallen Starks, Sansa mentions that her father never talked about his sister Lyanna and that others said that she was quite beautiful. This prompts Lord Baelish to tell a story about the only time he ever saw Ned's sister. It was at a great tournament where everyone who was anyone was in attendance. Basically, it was like Westeros' Coachella. At the end of the tournament, it was Rhaegar Targaryen who stood victorious, and as his prize, he was given a crown of blue roses to give to the woman he believed to be the most beautiful in all of the Seven Kingdoms. It's a weird prize, but hey, go with it. So of course, everyone expected him to give it to his wife, Elia Martell, cause, you know, it's his wife, but he actually rode past her to give the crown to, you guessed it, Lyanna Stark. Man, that had to be an awkward horse ride back to the old stronghold, right? Shortly thereafter, he kidnaps her and, well, we know the rest of the story. Or do we? Did this guy really just kidnap, rape, and kill Lyanna because he thought she was pretty? Something tells me you don't romantically and chivalrously give a crown of flowers to a girl if that's what you're planning to do a few weeks later. And honestly, I'm not the only one who thinks so. Sure, Robert Baratheon made badmouth Rhaegar on the show, but everyone else gives the guy glowing reviews. Sir Jorah praises the late prince when he discusses Rhaegar with his sister Daenerys. Rhaegar fought valiantly. Rhaegar fought nobly. Rhaegar died. Sir Barristan Selmy, one of the noblest and most honorable people on the show behind Ned Stark, eagerly tells stories about how considerate and generous Rhaegar was. Rhaegar never liked killing. He loved singing. And what did you do with the money? Well, one time he gave it to the next missile down the street. One time he gave it to an orphanage in Flea Bottom. One time we got horribly drunk. Even Ned has nothing but kind words to say about him in the books, which is odd when you're referring to the man who supposedly stole your sister and had a direct hand in her death. Isn't it much more likely that this kidnapping story is simply a cover for two kids who fell in love and did something incredibly romantic and incredibly stupid by running away together? We get an additional detail in the books that after the supposed kidnapping, Rhaegar hides Lyanna away in a place named the Tower of Joy. Really? The Tower of Joy? Subtle much RR? Seriously though, these guys are fighting a war for him and he's hanging out in the Belfry of Banging? The Minaret of Minage? The Parapet of Pleasure? After Rhaegar's death, the story we know is that Ned races up the Tower of Titillation to free Lyanna, only to find her dying in a bed of blood, with her last words being, Promise me, Ned.
Now think about this, a bed of blood? Yes, it could be Rhaegar killing the girl, but childbirth can also be a pretty messy business. Then she asks Ned to make a promise? Could it be perhaps a promise to raise her newborn child? Or to take it one step further, to keep the child safe by keeping his true parentage secret? I mean, you know Robert would totally freak out if his beloved fiancé had a baby with another man. Robert just started a rebellion against a royal dynasty in an attempt to get her back. Oh, sorry, we were in love. That ain't gonna cut it. It would make sense that Ned would have to claim the child as his own to cast off suspicion. Then, when Ned returns to Winterfell with the baby John, no one would ever know the boy's true parentage. Makes a whole lot of sense to me. Additionally, we hear that when Ned rode for the Tower of Joy, he and his companions didn't find Lyanna alone. No, three of the Kingsguard were there standing watch over the Lady Stark, including the Lord Commander himself. Why would they be there instead of fighting or swearing allegiance to the new king, or most importantly of all, protecting the only two remaining Targaryens, Daenerys and her brother, as they escape the country. Probably because they were busy protecting another Targaryen, a baby, the heir to the Iron Throne of the Kingdom, Jon Snow. Need more proof? Ever wonder why Ned had such an extreme reaction to Robert trying to assassinate Daenerys back in Season 1? How about the disgust and urgency he shows when Robert says he'll kill every Targaryen he can get his hands on? Stakes are high because Jon Snow would also have Targaryen blood, meaning his life would be at risk. Or how about some more super recent evidence? like? The awkward scene between John and the Red Woman at the Wall in Season 5, where she attempts to seduce him. The only times she's done this in the past was with men who possess royal blood, Stannis and Gendry, and now her latest target, Jon Snow, with the royal blood of the Targaryens coursing through his veins. But the biggest smoking gun of all comes from none other but Ned Stark himself, or rather, his actor, Sean Bean. In an interview with Vulture, Bean admits that Ned's, quote, definitely got some unfinished business that needs to be resolved there. I'm obviously not Jon Snow's dad, and you need that to be revealed at some point don't you?" End quote. That, my dear theorists, is what you call an open and shut case, or a desperate need for actors to sign NDAs. One of the two. So if this theory does prove to be true, what does this mean for the future plot lines of the show? Well, if Rhaegar and Lyanna got married before Jon was born, he'd be the rightful heir to the Iron Throne, even more so than Daenerys, which makes another odd scene in the show make a whole lot of sense. We've seen this image a few times throughout the series. Most most notably as one of the visions Danny sees in the House of the Undying, the King's Throne Room covered in snow. It could be a literal reference to Jon Snow, which is a bit on the nose, but whatever, it's television. Or it could just represent that both Daenerys and the true King of the Realm have a connection with the Cold North. Perhaps it's foreshadowing that before the end of the series, Jon Snow will be sitting on that throne. It's kind of poetic in a way. The North and the Wall and the Starks symbolize ice, cold and harsh. The South and King's Landing and the Targaryens symbolize fire, hot and passionate. If Jon is the merging of these bloodlines, then his truly would be a song of ice and fire. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. We've got another Game of Thrones theory in the works in time for the season 5 finale that, trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss. So pull an Eddard Stark and behead that subscribe button to make sure you're the first to show off how smart you are to your friends. Or how nerdy. Whatever, screw them, it's a good show, they should watch it. Now, welcome back to the Super Amazing End Card Tournament, where I give you a question, you vote, I tell you the results next time, and you get taken to the channel page where you binge watch all film theory episodes. Today, an obvious question. I want to know, who is your favorite character from Game of Thrones? There are definitely a lot, but the obvious frontrunners are Arya, Tyrion, and Daenerys. So let's choose between them. For me, it's a tough call between Arya and Tyrion. Anyway, click on one to choose, and next time find out who truly wins this game. Of Thrones.